Welcome viewers to this program where Parle Network Group of Hospitals shares important health information from renowned medical experts from this premier health institution. Our focus today will be on understanding child cancer. Let me introduce Professor Jitike to you. Professor Jitike is the consultant responsible for children's cancer unity at Parle Network Group of Hospitals. She is also a professor and a lecturer in the Department of Pediatrics at the University of Zimbabwe College of Health Sciences. She has worked at the World Health Organization, the regional office for Africa for many years. Professor Chistike sits on a number of boards, for example, the Child Protection Society, St. Giles, Southern Africa Aid Trust, based in South Africa. Professor Jitsike is also an active Rotarian. Welcome, Professor Jitsike, to this program. Thank you very much, Professor Jitsike, for coming. The public has been making a lot of inquiries about child cancer. They really need to understand what child cancer is. is. Probably, Professor, you may want to share with us what is the understanding of child cancer. Okay. Um, maybe you start with just a bit of description about cancer. So cancer, cancer is, uh, is a condition where there is abnormal growth of tissues or cells. For example, uh, your eye, instead of your eye developing normally, something goes with the development of the eye and then it, become, it might become cancerous. Okay. Now, about uh, uh, cancer in children, a lot of people are always very shocked when you say cancer in children. They say, oh, but your children suffer from cancer. Yeah. You see? Yes. They think it's only adults, but in fact, children of all ages suffer from cancer. Okay. Even before they are born, even in Buma, in the mom's womb, some of them can be diagnosed as having some okay. malignant condition. But the good thing is that it is not common. Okay. You see, okay. cancer in children is very rare okay. compared to all the other uh, health problems like diarrhea, pneumonia, okay. malnutrition. So it is an extremely rare condition. Okay. And it's um, almost, if you look at all the cancers in Zimbabwe, okay. adults and children, children would constitute like maybe 5% of all that cancer. Okay. So yeah, it's not common. But it doesn't mean that we don't pay attention to, to, you know, to the cancer. Because if, if a family has a child with cancer, you yes. cannot tell them, oh, well, cancer is not very common. Let's forget yeah, about yeah. it. Look at other things. A child is a child, whether it's got cancer or not. Okay. Okay. And, uh, and uh, although I'm saying it's not rare, but in other countries, in Western countries, it's a very common problem in Western countries because with the advancement in those countries, they have managed to rid themselves of common conditions like diarrhea, okay. pneumonia, malnutrition, which we are still battling with. Okay. You know, so maybe in a couple of generations, to come, well, not generations, a couple of decades, maybe yeah. 20, 30 years, when we get rid of all these common childhood illnesses, okay. then cancer will become a major feature okay. in child health. Thank you very much, Professor. You have been just talking about the general information about cancer in children. Maybe the public would also want to know just the different types of cancer that will commonly affect children in Zimbabwe. Okay. Um, children's cancers are basically uh, different from adult cancers. Okay. okay. Um, and uh, again, as I said, a lot of cancer depends on the age of the child. So if you look at children under five, for okay. example, then a common cause of cancer in children under five is the eye cancer. I get it's called retinoblastoma. Okay. You see? Um, so that's a common cancer. And also we have abdominal cancer, cancer of the kidney. Okay. So these are the two 
commonest tumors uh, in children under five. Okay. And in older children, we have things like leukemia, like lymphomas, Kaposi sarcoma. So we have other types of cancers okay. in the older children. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think you also experience in guidance living with children. People may also want to know how, how they detect, how they see that their child could be having one of those types of cases. You know, I think that is an extremely good question because um, cancer is curable in okay. children if it's detected early. Okay. So if parents are able to detect cancer in children early yeah. and come to the hospital early, then the chances of cure is very high. Okay. Now with, uh, with the eye cancer, which I said is a common cause of cancer, um, usually it presents like a white spot in the eye, in the pupil, okay. a white spot. And um, uh, you know, parents might think there's nothing, you know, it's not a big problem, or they might go to the clinic and they'll be misdiagnosed. Okay. Maybe the clinic would think oh, it's just an infection, they'll be putting eye drops and you know, it goes on and on. By the time the penny drops, let's say, you know, by the time uh, after a while, then you discover that you know, the, now it was just a, a, a white spot and now it's becoming like a table tennis ball oh, or a ping oh, okay. you know, so it's becoming a swelling. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet, if this child, right from the beginning, when it was just white, yes. came to the hospital, it will be cured, it will be taken out, and might not even have to have the eye taken, it can be treated, okay. and the, guy, the child will have the vision yeah. intact and the life of the child will be spared. Okay. But unfortunately, they come late. By the time you come, oh. the swelling is too big, and the, the baby would have had it for maybe six months, nine months, or even one year, okay. where uh, the doctors might want to take out the eye, uh, but the parents are not happy about taking out the eye. They say, oh, no, let's go and try traditional medicine. Oh, okay. And by the time they come back, it's too late. The thing would have spread in the brain, oh. and whatever, you know, so, oh, so that okay. is... So that's the sad part of it. And yet, if it's discovered early, you know, and maybe a, a hint to the parents yeah. to discover it early. When, I mean, everybody has a mobile. Yes. And there's a camera in the mobile. Yeah. So if you get into the habit of taking photos of your children. Yes. Okay. And if you look at the eyes, if you see there's a difference in the, the one eye looks white and one eye looks red. Okay. Then there's a problem. Mm -hmm. So the parents can prefer, can keep checking every six months. Yes. You take a photo of the child and the check or every three months. Okay. Okay. You can come back. So that's one. And the other one, uh, which is also extremely curable if they come early, is cancer of the abdomen. Okay. Of the kidney. Of the which kidney. Which is in the abdomen. Okay. 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 Very often, the mother will discover it by chance. Maybe she'll be bathing the child and then she discovers this. Uh, a, a lump or a swelling in the abdomen. Okay. But then she feels that ah, the child is not complaining, it's not painful, it so it's nothing. Okay. So she doesn't come to the hospital. So oh. by the time she comes, the abdomen is it's already bigger. Oh. And then the older children, then we have, like I said, we have leukemia. Those ones are not uh, prevent, I mean, you may not be able to detect it early. You know? okay. But if you see your child is not well, it's always come. It's always good to come to the hospital come because the earlier you come, the better. Okay. Okay. And then we also have the Kaposi sarcoma, which is associated with HIV infection. Okay. So it's the one tumor or one cancer that we can cure. Oh no, sorry, we can prevent. Can prevent. If the mother who is pregnant goes for testing for HIV, uh -huh. and she prevents mother-to-child transmission, the baby will not get HIV, and the baby will not get cancer. Okay. Which is related to each other. Okay. Which is called Kaposi sarcoma. So that is one way of. So okay. every pregnant mother must go and be checked for each other, for herself, her good health, for her health, and for the baby's health, as well as for preventing cancer. Oh. In child. Okay. Then what are the major causes of cancer in children, Professor? Um, you know, in most cases, the causes are not known. Okay. It's not like adults where you can say lung cancer. If you smoke, you get lung cancer. Yes. If you drink a lot, you might get liver cancer. Okay. Okay. In children, there's nothing like that. Okay. The only one I'm telling you is the HIV. The child's got the HIV. Then, oh. so we know that's the cause. But for the majority, uh, we don't know the cause. Okay. Yeah, because the the organs that are affected are, are different. It's usually, um, you know organs that are associated with the development of the child, okay? okay. So it's not okay. something the mother would have done 
or the father or something she's eating or she's drunk or nothing of the sort. It just happens. It just happens. So what about this general belief that diets have got a lot of contribution in the case of, is it true? Absolutely it's not true. Okay. The straight answer is that there's no diet that a child takes or the mother takes that can cause cancer in a child. Okay. So people should not uh, look at diet. Everybody, the moment you say a child has got cancer, oh, what food should I give the child? Should I give him this food? There's, there's really nothing. Like okay. That. So what about this junk food issue? Um, well, the junk food issue will, uh, will not cause cancer in children. That's it. It will good. cause obesity. Okay. Okay, it can okay. cause other problems, but it okay. will not cause cancer. Oh. Oh, thank you very much. So, so, the, so is there something that parents can do really to try to prevent some of these cancers uh, okay. affecting their children? Okay. Well, um, like I said, in, in, in most cases, there's nothing that parents can do because you don't know what is causing so you don't know how to prevent it. How to prevent see. it. And it's not, uh, they're not really preventable, like I said, in the adult, which is depends yes. on the lifestyle of the adult. Okay. Yes. But two things. One is, early uh, coming to the hospital early. Okay. Don't waste time going to, uh, you know, to go and see the traditional yeah. healer. Yeah. To go and the, you yes. can go and see them, but yeah. come to the hospital at the same time. We yeah. are not saying that, forget about them. Yeah. So the parents oh. mean well for their children, but okay. it's just the way they, 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 because I think it's lack of understanding. And then if the child, we've had cases of kids coming, have chemo, but you see, chemo can take a long time. Maybe yes. some chemo will take like uh, three months, some will take six months, some yes. will take even one year or even more. Oh. So you give the child chemo and, and you know, if the child had a swelling in the, in the neck or something, the swelling gets better again, you know? Oh. But it doesn't mean it's the end of the chemo. So the mother will not come back. Because oh. she said, oh, I thought it went away. So okay. why come back, pay transport money? I don't have money for transport. And you see, yeah. so the mothers do not come for full hour. Okay. Or what they, what we call it? We call it the abandoned treatment. Or abandoned yeah. treatment. So that's a big problem. Okay. Abandoning of treatment for, yes. for whatever reasons, for family reasons, financial reasons, whatever. You, or maybe the father is in South Africa, have to go and consult the father. Oh. So all these social issues oh, yes. end up affecting the child. The child. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much, Professor. Then we understand there's a, the, the range of children. In terms of age, yeah. varies from probably zero to sixteen. Yeah. Is there a particular age group within that range that is commonly affected by cases? Um, that's a good question. Uh, like I said, we have uh, like all age groups are okay are affected. So I really can't say that the age is between this. But what I can say is that if you are between this and this age, this is the likely type of cancer you can get you because can get. of your age. Uh -huh. But I cannot say that uh, when you reach this age, you are more likely to get cancer than others. So yeah, it, 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 it goes across the board. Okay. So okay. Except that it changes, the type of cancer changes with the age of the child. So what you might get in the under five okay. might not be common in a 14 year old child, for example. Okay. You get a different type of cancer. Oh, okay, okay. We thought probably the younger ones are more vulnerable to cancer. Um, no, they're all the same. I mean, in terms of childhood, the, the, the ages are, you know, uh, there's no particular age. Age group. More, yeah, but as I said, it's the, it's the type of cancer. Okay. We also understand that the Paralelian Group of Hospitals is the only old institution in Zimbabwe which is the, a child cancer award. Mm -hmm. a, a word specifically dedicated for children with cancer. Mm -hmm. How do you then cope up with the all children coming from all over Zimbabwe? Um, well, we managed to cope. Like this is a tertiary institution. Okay. And like you said, it's the only um, institution in the country where you have a word dedicated for the management of children with cancer. Okay. It doesn't mean that in other re regions or other provinces or other hospitals. They don't never ever treat cancer. Okay. They do, but it's, the treatment will not be the same as if you are in a center that is dedicated for that. Okay. 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 So it's better, you are better off sending your child who's got cancer to a center like this where we have the surgeons, the radio, the radio oncologist, the social worker, the pediatric oncologist, the chemo, you know, we have all the settings in one area. 
Okay. But if you go to other centers, you may not have one of them. So you'll be doing piecemeal management of the child, which is not good for the child. You know, okay. eventually, and a lot of these ones, eventually, they come here. At the oh. end of the day, okay. they all come here. You know, mm. and then unfortunately, some of the kids die. Then you have the reputation that yes. oh, you know, when you go to Paris, they die. Yeah, they but die. it's not it's oh. because they come late. By the time they come to us, they are already more reborn. Oh, you see. okay. So, but we we can't refuse any child. Yeah, you know, yeah. to say oh no no, why you know you were treated outside, and yeah. you might as well continue. We don't do that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, do you think the support that you are getting then, being the the, the sender? where you receive all, most of the children, particularly those who are now serious. Yeah. Do you think they need the support that you are getting is actually adequate to take those children through? Uh, okay, well, you know, from looking at our economic situation, we can never say it's adequate. But just okay. to say something, um, especially in, in, in situations where the economy is poor or is yes. bad, yes. Uh, it is better to invest in one center. Okay. than to invest in many centers for cancer because you don't have the resources, you don't have yes. the, the human resources or the facilities. So uh, so this is centralized care is better because it, it benefits everybody. It benefits us, the doctors. We, okay. we, we tend to see more cases, we have more experience, yes. it benefits the nurses. And so everybody benefits at the end of the day when everybody is under one center. Okay. okay? But if if, if uh, fragmented, then it's it's you know it's, it's not very effective. Now to answer your question, whether how, how do we cope? Uh, like I said, we cope, but um, um, a lot of our cases come late. They come in late. some centers, they even keep them there for weeks. I don't know why they kept them. I don't want to make, name hospitals, okay. but you have a child who goes and spends four weeks in a hospital. They're investigating, you know, doing that. Yes. By the time then they send a child to us. And, oh. you know, these are the cases that this, uh, that distress us because they would have come from other health institutions. Okay. People should be more aware that the earlier the child is referred yes. for treatment, the better. <clears throat> the better. But again, maybe sometimes there are also financial financial problems, like maybe they need an investigation they cannot afford. afford. Okay. So we have our kids. Fortunately, we have, uh, um, you know, support from well-wishers, okay. from community, uh, you know, from some NGOs, or that come and help us, okay. you know, and uh, we try as much as possible, as much as possible, not to deny a child a treatment because the parents cannot afford. Okay. Because I think that's really is, for us doctors, that is our aim, you know. So let's not send the child away. I mean, I can't think of it. Sending the child away because the mother can't pay for yeah. x-ray. Yes. It's just not acceptable. So we do our best. We even call some somebody. Oh, please, please, can you give us hundred dollars? Okay. Unfortunately, we can get some people like that. Please, we oh. need this. This mother needs this. We don't have the money, you know. And like I was telling you the other day, we have yes. one or two people who have adopted our ward. So they oh. come to our ward say, okay, this is thirty dollars. Okay. This is twenty dollars. So all these things help. Yeah. Because sometimes mothers don't even have four dollars. Yeah. To to buy a drug, for example. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we try, you know. Mm. So so parents should not worry about the money. Okay, I don't know yes. why the parent people will say to me, but please, yes, put your child's health first, and the money will look for the money later. later. <laughs> I, I think that's that, very that, important. <laughs> <laughs> I also think that is very important for the health of our children, yeah. because particularly those who are having these problems of cancer, we really need to to assist. So, Professor, suppose we get somebody today who really wants to support the cancer unit at the Paranayan Group of Hospitals. Yeah. What would you really say is a key, key preference that they should think about assisting these children? Yeah, okay. okay, obviously, if you are talking about cancer, you are talking about drugs. Drugs. Chemotherapy. Okay. Chemo, chemo drugs. We do have uh, KISCAN, you know KISCAN, yes. that helps us with uh, drugs. But unfortunately, you know, there have been some financial constraints and whatever. Oh, okay. okay. So, so really, if we need, uh, if there are well wishes for the sake of the children, you know, the sake of the children. For the children. Yeah. Yeah. So we need, yeah. uh, you know, uh, assistance with chemo. Yes. We need assistance with blood. Blood. So blood. the blood transfusion, because when you have chemo, you also, when you give a child chemo, um, you know, it can also affect your bone marrow. And, so you need blood. 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 And to imagine that, the life of this child depends on this blood transfusion and the parents cannot afford the blood. Yeah. So what do you do? What do you do? It's really tricky. 
are we happy to say that this child should, sorry, the child should, you know, uh, I mean, should not be saved because yes. the parents cannot come? Could afford the lives. Well, listen, there are so many people. Yes, you see, so, so, so the public, please, let's, let's just be uh, conscious uh, or, or sensitive to, to needs of children with cancer. Because the children with cancer are the ones that are neglected. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I must even say that, even in our health services, I'm, I'm not blaming anybody, because obviously you want to, your focus is to save as many children as possible, yes. as opposed to a, a, a couple. Yes. So we have, uh, Ministry of Health is doing all these vaccinations and all these uh, yeah. programs yes. to save the majority of the children of in the, the country. Children, yes. But the children with cancer might not be reached, because their problem is different. Oh. There's this intensive is expensive, yes. you know, and it's not many. So people will say, no, no, let's, let's forget about the children right now. Let's oh. just, you see, so that is our, you know, so okay, nobody can do everything. So maybe the, uh, the Ministry of Health is thinking about public health. So yes. you the budget. But, but as individuals in the society, in the community, yes. the church groups, the mother, mother's organizations, the, the, uh, which other organizations? So many organizations. Yes, so many, yes. Yeah. Please, even the the corporate bodies, the banks yeah. and all that. Yes. I mean, how much will it cost if we just, uh, you know, be conscious of the need to donate finances for us to buy chemo and to buy blood? These are the two important things. Two important know? things. Yeah. There, there are other things like investigations and what have you. You know, it's okay. Sometimes we twist the arms of people in those who do radio, okay. uh, red, I mean, uh, radiation, sorry, not radiation, the, the extra guys, uh, yes. radiology. Yes. Uh, we beg them, please, 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 can you, can you do it for free? Can you? Yes. And they're obliged, but how often are you going to keep begging? Yeah, I really, it's so your challenge. They see, yes, yes. When they see you, they run down, they say, ah, she's yeah. coming to beg. Yes. yes. Yeah. But we are begging on behalf of the children. Of the children. You, you, oh. you so we really so, need more people to come on board. Yeah. So I'll be and support. very happy if people come. You know, we have, I told you we have angels, yes. a couple of them that every month they make it a point to come and donate thirty dollars. Yes, I mean, and that goes a long, a way, long way, you know, yeah. to to uh, to help to help. To help as soon as people. you give the money for transport, oh. you know? so some mothers come and spend one month, two months here because of the treatment that takes a long time, yes. and this poor mother has nothing. Oh. How are you going to send her home? Yeah. So we give her, you know, but this is for well wishes, you know, people coming to it. So okay. we can take this money. In. So, oh. we, so without without the members of the public, yes, uh, our children will, you know, uh, what's the word? Will be deprived of living to the full. To the full. Live their life to yeah. the full. Ah, we understand really a lot of support really is required in that specific area. I also understand that uh, you now have a lot of experience in this area of child cancer. Mm -hmm. Are there some myths that you encounter from people, parents or guardians or children themselves about cancer? Myths? Uh, well, you know, uh, yeah, okay, you say, of course, there are lots of myths, you know. Yeah. But maybe I'll just mention one or two, but talk about the positive things. I mean, some of the myths would be, um, you see, cancer is not a disease of the child alone. Okay. It's not only just the parents as well, it's the whole family. Yeah, you see. Okay. So uh, you might have the parents that come with a child and you've explained to them what you are going to do and all that. Okay. And the, the parents go back home, and of course, they want to go back to their relatives, to the oh. mother in law, to oh. the mothers, and explain. Yes. And those people have not been informed. And then you hear, no, 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 I don't want anyone to prick my child. Oh, you understand? Why keep that? You know, like you know, you have a child who's got leukemia, you need to do the bone marrow. Yeah. And then you have a, uh, a a call from the grandmother. Please, no one must pick my child. So what are you going to do? Yeah. She said, okay, father. And the father said, no, that's what his mother wants. You know. So these are the these are the the things that really sadden us because we know the father's doing it for the best interest of the child, but in fact, yes. it is detrimental to the child. Oh, okay. okay. But maybe the positive thing would be. More mothers and fathers are getting to know about cancers in their children, okay? And even the children themselves are getting to know their condition. Okay. So it's always nice when the child comes to the world, maybe six years or seven years old, 
and you know our doctors rotate. Yes, so you're a new doctor. Yeah. So this time we tell the doctor, no, that's not what you're going to do this time. This is what you're going to give. Okay. Which is very nice. Yeah. yeah. So the kids get to know. Yes. And we have a crash for the kids, so they look they look forward to coming to the hospital. Because okay. it's a crash, they have volunteers to come and play with them, draw with them, oh. we have TV, we have cartoons, we have food, mm. people donate mahewo, they yes. donate biscuits, yeah. way. so the children look forward to coming, and they're sweet, you know, so we try to make the life of the children, you know, uh, comfortable, comfortable. and then there are toys, so the kids are happy, so okay. I can see that, you know, and they're developing friendship, you know, so they know oh. they know that maybe I come every three weeks and they expect Tinashi to also be coming. So when they come, oh, has Tinashi come? Okay. So no, Tinashi has not come yet, you'll be coming, you see. Yeah. So that type of comradeship and friendship amongst the kids yes. is also very <laughs> No, I, I understand that, Professor. I think that is very important. And I can see your passion for these children and really trying to assist them. Uh, I understand you have also mentioned the issues to do with the the socio-economic, you know, factors that affect these children. Mm -hmm. Are there any particular socio-economic factors that affect these children that you may want to bring to the attention of our viewers? Um, well, the socio-economic factors would be obviously the poorer you are, the worse the chances in your child. Okay. And, but you don't want to accept that. Okay. Okay. Because the mother comes, she comes. There's nothing she can afford. You know, yeah. She cannot afford anything. So that's where the problem is. And then. Um, the, the people who can afford are at a better better off position because they can do all the tests, they can have all the chemo, you know. So, uh, so that is that is our main problem. It's just the financial constraints, oh. difficulties that you know. But like I said, if you have financial constraints, you cannot buy a Mercedes Benz car. So what? Yes. But you cannot afford your child not to live because of the financial constraints. Yes. So that's the difference. Okay. I understand. People have to make sacrifices, really. Yeah, I, I can see you are emotionally attached to, to this issue. No, no, it's because, the children. It's because they, 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 they deserve to live like any other child. Okay. You see? Yes. And the, the, the thing that, that uh, hurts me most yes. is this child knows that they've got a serious condition. Oh. You know? Yes. And they wonder, why am I not in school? What is wrong? Why am I so different? Yes. So what are you going to tell this child? You see, you see how the thing is. It's, it's difficult. Yeah. It's difficult. Yeah. Okay. And then on the other hand, we've had kids who yeah. have gone home and now have gone to grade one. They yeah. put on their uniforms. They want to come and show us okay. that they're not going to school. They're yeah. their uniforms. Yes. So it's very Life is moving on. Yes. Oh, that's really <laughs> great. Probably, yes. Professor, you may have some key message, a key message from the whole discussion that you may want to leave to parents yeah. whose children might also get affected by this problem. Okay. Maybe, maybe my key message would be, first of all, is to acknowledge okay. that every parent treasures their children. Okay. No parent will take any uh, you know, action that would be detrimental to their children, no way be detrimental to their children. You, yes. you, you understand? Yeah. So yeah. whatever decisions the parents take, they are taking it in the best interest of the child. Yes. But the parents must also understand that they are not medical doctors. Yes. So they should also accept that if they are given advice, yeah. they should take the advice. They should not rely on what the neighbor has said yes. or what the pastor has told them. Or, you know, so that is number one. So the parents, so I don't know how else I can put it. You oh. know? They should just accept that, okay, something has happened to our child and we've come to the center that somebody can, you know, can assist you the child. You get, yes. yes. I mean, there are, oh, there are many doctors here. So you can say, okay, this particular doctor does not know what she's doing, but this other doctor will know. This other doctor will know. You know yes. so you're not likely to be misdiagnosed or mismanaged in a center like this. Yes. Okay. Yes. So they shouldn't take their children from the, out of the hospital to say that, no, we are, we are going to go to the Nangas or something. The Nangas, so the whatever, yes. yes. So, so that, is, that is one message, you know? Okay. So we are, we are, even when you take the child, we feel sorry for the child, but we appreciate that you are doing it in the best interest of them, but we feel sorry for the child because this child is not going to survive. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. That's yes. One. And secondly, is uh, again, um, coming early for, you know, if, if there's something wrong with your child, don't wait and don't say that because it's, it's not painful, uh, yes. You know, uh, 
I didn't think it was serious. Okay. Especially if, if it's a lump, if it's a swelling anywhere, swelling on the head, in the neck, anywhere there's a swelling, it's abnormal. Okay. So you come and see the doctor. Okay. Or if the child is bleeding from the gums, you see my yeah. child yeah. brushes yeah. the yeah. teeth, yes. and then there's a lot of blood coming out, then you come. Yeah, okay. The child's got leukemia, it's got blood oh. cancer. Okay. okay. So that is the second message. Early, um, you know, coming to the hospital. To the hospital. Mm -hmm. And the third, uh, messages not to abandon the treatment, not to stop halfway and discontinue the treatment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think these are the three main messages. That okay. I can... Thank you very much, Professor. It has been quite wonderful having you on this Thank program. You. Thank you very much, viewers, for watching this program. And uh, I want to believe that we have seen the passion of a doctor uh, actually handling children uh, suffering from cancer. Uh, Professor Chitike, I would want to thank you very much for this free program again and uh, spending your valuable time. You know you are a very busy person with the, your word. Viewers, thank you very much. For any further information that you might want, please uh, visit us on our website www.pariwasp.org. Our email address, which is uh, publicrelations at pariwasp.org. Thank you very much, viewers. We hope you enjoyed this program and benefited a lot. Thank mm -hmm. you.